Welcome to the Blue Cafe. We offer stories of infidelity, betrayal, and redemption. Please like and subscribe. Cheers. Now, on to today's story. One year out from D-Day, and oh the damage she has wrought. Advice. I've been watching from the sidelines on this forum for the past six months or so, and having read and empathized with many of the stories that fellow survivors have shared, I figured now, one year out from my own D-Day, was an opportune time for me to share my own. No doubt this will sound familiar to many of you, we had been married for almost five years and our daughter had just turned three. We'd been looking to buy a house for over a year and get out of the city and finally we had an accepted offer on a home that we both liked. Things were looking up for us even in the midst of this pandemic which had already upended life as we all knew it. Eleven days before closing on the house, I picked up her phone to silence it while her mother called during our daughter's bedtime routine. I was curious about her screen time usage and so I opened the report, she is a heavy Twitter user, and saw this app Discord had over 40 hours on it for the week, 8 hours on that day alone. When I opened the app there it was, the message I love you from a man whose name I didn't recognize. When I clicked on the message, thinking, surely, this is one of her friends just laughing at one of her clever quips, I was dismayed to see she had reciprocated the I love you and what preceded it was an intense bout of online sexting. I confronted her that night, but her response immediately set off alarm bells she initially denied that it was anything serious and claimed it was nothing more than online fantasy between her group of friends. I indicated that it seemed like more than that, and she then took the tact of blaming me for not being more attentive to her needs sexually. After digging a little further, I came to learn that this man, who was married with child and living in Singapore, and my wife had been sexting for only a few weeks, but the level of engagement was intense for both of them and they were seemingly falling in love. All of this as we were about to buy a house together. She promised me that she would cut things off with the main guy and work on the marriage, but you can probably see where this is going. We went ahead with the purchase of the house and moved out of the city last June. Over the summer, she resumed contact with him, all the while lying to me about it. I knew this because she left her messenger app logged in on a tablet we used for our daughter where she maintained a conversation with two close friends she met through this group on Twitter, never in person, I should add. She suddenly had a new narrative about our relationship, how awful I am to her, I married my abuser, what can I say? And how in love she was with this other man, who, side note, is 22 years her senior. In spite of her going through the motions of working on our marriage, agreeing to counseling and then firing each counselor, in August she asked for a separation, less than three months after I had discovered her online infidelity. In that brief period of time, I lost 50 pounds, the infidelity diet works. We went into mediation that September, and apparently things weren't moving fast enough to her liking and she felt I was dragging things out in order to torture her. In December, unbeknownst to me at the time, she filed for divorce with her lawyer, thereby negating our progress, and expenses incurred, in mediation. In January, after an argument in which she slammed a door on me, she left the next day with our daughter to stay with her mother, this had been agreed upon earlier because our babysitter wasn't available that week. A few days after that, two police officers showed up at the door to serve me with an order of protection to stay away from my wife and daughter. Fortunately, it was not an order to vacate so I was able to stay in the house while this was going on. Since then, we have been in family court to deal with her allegations of abuse, she calls herself a domestic violence survivor on Twitter even though I never so much as raised a finger towards her. After being investigated by CPS and the allegations being deemed unfounded, I have a limited access schedule with my daughter, a whopping two hours a week. But even that is too much for my wife, who claims that I'm manipulating our daughter and confusing her during our brief visits together. It would appear likely that a forensic evaluation will be necessary to get to the bottom of these issues as she continues to claim abuse and say I am a threat to her and our daughter's safety, even though I have no history of violence whatsoever and she has no proof of any of her allegations. 
I will say that things are progressing, albeit slowly, and the legal bills are adding up. It is astounding the lengths that the WS will sometimes go to protect themselves when caught in a lie. And the degree that my STBXW has been deceiving herself in this ordeal has been mind-boggling to me, my friends and family. Please note that I glossed over a lot of details in the interest of brevity for this forum, so if anyone has a question or would seek clarity on any of my story, please leave it in the comments and I'll try to respond with more pertinent information. But as this case is very active in the courts, I need to be very selective with details for the time being. Your feedback is most welcome. And thanks to you all for being brave in sharing your own stories and insights, it's been a big help for me to process this trauma and recognize that I'm not alone in my plight and that things do eventually get better, even though we are all scarred for life. Your STBXW has not only created her own fantasy world, but she actually believes that it exists. Her world is built with imaginary bricks and mortar, and the green grass that she sees in her front yard doesn't actually exist. She may stay forever in this delusion, because to the untrained eye it seems that she has issues that go well beyond the norm of dissatisfaction in her marriage and in her life. One thing that you might want to consider is having an order issued by a judge that will prevent your wife from taking your daughter out of the country or out of state without your permission. Now that passports are required to travel to all foreign countries, your daughter's name and date of birth will go into a database that will be used to verify all passports, and if your daughter is in that database, bells will go off if she tries to take your daughter out of the country. If your wife ever comes out of her fog, and wants to reconcile, please do not get back with her. She is too unstable as a person to ever be involved with anybody. We are way past any chance of reconciliation. Thanks for your insights. This is a known tactic by cheaters to deflect guilt and be the victim. The idea that people will find out they're cheaters is too harmful for their fragile ego, so they put out false claims to make you the guilty party. It's disgusting and that's why everyone that suspects their partner of cheating, should have proof and honestly document every interaction from that moment on. I'm sorry that you lost so much and I hope you get to have your child with you soon. Thank you. I have a lot of documentation. The crazy thing is that I really think that she believes her claims against me at this point. It's beyond a calculated ploy of her conscious mind and has become the truth. Another way to deflect guilt is say that they were raped and they were under the control of this person. That person made her do drugs. That was my case, never once admitted to sex outside the marriage. She lied to herself, me, the judge, her lawyer, her therapist, and her family. Yes I failed to mention that she has accused me of rape and says I've been gaslighting her for years to keep her under my thumb. Sorry to hear your story, sounds similar to my own. Mine was the guy she was cheating with. He forced her to do coke and was under his control and if she reported it he would have threatened her with his gun. Mine wouldn't know what the term gaslighting is, but she did it once she locked me in with marriage and especially more with the house. It sounds like she's attempting to make a case to alienate you from your daughter so she can move to wherever AP is. That seems clear with how calculated her actions are. I'll never understand a person like this stuck so far in the fog that she attempts to ruin her child's relationship with her father. Keep fighting. Your ex will continue this spiral to self-serve and destroy herself with her poor behavior. She's a broken, broken human and it's incredibly sad just how broken she is that she's created an entirely false reality in her mind. Definitely broken. And yes, I wondered that to re, the AP. But she's not going to win sole custody doesn't mean she won't go to maximum effort to try and sounds as if she already has. It seems that your wife is intentionally trying to ruin your reputation as both a husband and a father to gain full custody so she can run off to the opposite side of the planet to be with the AP. It is awful to hear such stories but it happens and it is clear that your wife is deeply disturbed by wanting to spin any story to have it her way. Contact your solicitor, lawyer regarding the infidelity and to prevent her leaving the country with your daughter. 
She knows she can't leave the country without full custody and she's not going to get it. Thanks for your words. 2.5 years after D-Day, the divorce is final. Now I want to contact AP's wife. Seeking advice on what to say. Advice. The title pretty much says it all. I plan to write to the AP's wife on Facebook to introduce myself and inform her of the situation in the next week or so. You can probably surmise some of the story from the letter below, but if you want a fuller backstory and details, I shared it on this group here. Below is the letter I have drafted to her. I'm sorry to write this to you but I thought you had a right to know, if you don't already, that your husband Stephen became romantically involved with my ex-wife, Judy in April of 2020. At that time, we were living in Queens and you guys were in Singapore and their affair, as it were, was only over text and phone at that time. However, when I discovered their text slash sext messages in May of that year, and eight days before we were closing on a new house, it rapidly imploded our marriage and we were suddenly on the fast track for divorce. In the time since, Stephen has come to New York to spend time with Judy and my five-year-old daughter, Ella, at their apartment in Queens, but for some reason they refer to him as Cousin Mo. He was only recently staying with them for a couple of weeks this past month. It may be that you already know details of this situation or some of it. My guess is that you don't know the full scope of the story and while I certainly do not have the entire story myself, I would surmise that I could fill in some gaps for you and or clarify a few things that might otherwise be foggy to you. If this is news to you and is a complete shock, then I am very sorry indeed for dropping this bombshell on you. If that is the case, then you will want to gather as many facts as possible to get a grasp on what exactly unfolded before deciding what to do with this information. Please reach out to me here or via email at xxx if you want to talk. Thank you and again I am sorry for getting in touch to inform you of the situation. So what do you think? Too much apologizing? Not enough? Anyway, I haven't hit send yet and... As this is through Facebook and we aren't friends, she may not see it for a long time. Any constructive feedback is welcome. Thanks. P.S. Obviously the names are changed here to protect the not so innocent, but I do think it would be hilarious if they were using the name Cousin Mo for this guy. I think you should attach any information slash verification you have that can back up your story. I would also ask that she confirms receipt of the message whether she wants to have further communication or not. And keep in mind her husband has potentially blocked you on her phone on social media or other potential communication avenues so you may need to be strategic about how and when, or through whom, you reach out. A quick one line apologizing for not letting her know sooner but legal issues prevented you, may be a nice ad. I know that's what came to mind reading your draft. Send proof, the only thing you really need to add is some proof, photos, screenshots of messages, etc. Put some dates and times in there so she can at least confirm he was away during those question time frames. Give that clarity, details. Enough for her to say that sounds right and yes he was gone at that time etc. Add the phone numbers and some of the texts. Can't really dismiss that. Unless you meet in person, always assume that the person on the other side of your screen is the AP who intercepted your email and is now replying, posing as the OBS. Oh, yeah, I know all about it, we talked and I'm fine. The letter is fine. Tone slash attitude is good, not crazy. The only thing I might add on is why you took so long, why now? What usually happens, the betrayed spouse reads this, doesn't quite believe it, doesn't want to believe it, and will try to find any reason why this is a wacko, your letter is fine in that regard except the long delay between you knowing and you telling her. Usually the reason is didn't want to upload the apple cart until the divorce was finalized. It looks fine, personally I would have been a little more critical. You probably should in close copies of any evidence you have. Good luck. Thanks to all who have provided feedback thus far. I am definitely amending my letter to explain the length of time for not reaching out sooner, which is 
My ex chose a very combative and hostile approach to the divorce and with a young child in the mix, the last thing I wanted to do was add more kindling to a roaring fire. It was definitely not my impulse nor preference to wait it out but there was too much on the line for my daughter's sake. As for Facebook Messenger, this too is definitely not my preference for reaching out to AP's wife but it's all I have to go on at the moment. I have a name and a few photos but no email address, phone hash or address, so I do have an address that might be associated, I just can't verify it. I will add a mention to the letter that I do have proof available if she wants to see it, but I don't think I can attach anything to a Facebook message without being that person's friend first. Again, thank you all for reading and sharing your thoughts. This is a great community that I would imagine none of us wanted to be a part of, but some good can always come from these things. We hope you have enjoyed this episode. Please help us grow, hit that like button. Have a good day or night. Wherever you are.